Hello class, welcome back. So if I take a molecule right there, it has four carbons, we call that butane. And we see we can number these carbons right here. Now molecules don't just stay in that shape. They can rotate in three dimensional space. So that molecule could like flip 180 degrees and look like this. See, both of them are still butane. And they're identical. It's just I took this molecule right here and flipped it 180 degrees to make it look like this. Okay? That's just moving molecules in three dimensional space. But molecules can also rotate around their bonds. So this carbon two, carbon three bond, it, they can s rotate around each other. So I'm gonna represent that by that arrow that that bond can twist. And when that bond twists, we could have it look like that. One, two, three, four. This is butane and that is butane. But you can clearly see there's a difference. There's a visual difference. And we have a name for this difference. That is called a conformation. Those are conformations of one another, and they are still the same molecule, just in different conformations, based off of the rotations of these bonds right here. And these two different conformations are going to be, they're going to have different energy levels. One's going to be higher in energy, one's going to be lower in energy. And so we need a way to help us draw these different conformations to help us assess their stability. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to learn a concept called the Newman projections. And Newman projections are going to allow us to look at these different conformations. So what we have here is a imaginary molecule. We have two carbons here. Carbons, we'll number them carbon one and carbon two, but then all the other elements are just the alphabet of the, yeah, just the alphabet, okay? So these are not elements per se. And so this right here, this view of this imaginary molecule is the wedge and dash. Right, But if I take that molecule, okay, this backbone, you see how the, the, I don't have any, I'm tracing it right here. Okay? Those bonds are in the plane of the glass. If I take that and pull it out just a, at a little bit of an angle and I pull it out, I can make, look at the molecule like this. And that's called a sawhorse projection. And do you see if I take this molecule that's in the plane and just bend it out a little bit, you'll see that the dashed X and the wedged O correspond, okay? So let me make this point. I'm not twisting any bonds. They're just, I'm basically gluing them in place. And I'm just taking the whole molecule, pulling it out of the plane, and looking at it at an angle, and this is what I see, the sawhorse projection. You can see that the hydrogen's up, the P is down, up, down. Everything's matching. But then you can take the sawhorse and then rotate it out. If we took this molecule here, sorry, if I take this molecule here, and rotate it out of the plane and let's look, take it out 90 degrees, just boom. And I'm looking straight at it. I get this representation right here and that is called the Newman projection. I, you don't capitalize the M, what am I doing here? That's our Newman projection, okay? And what we're seeing here it's just looking at this molecule from a different perspective, okay? And the way that we're looking at this molecule, so what we want to be able to do is go from a wedged dashed molecule 
or a zigzag molecule and make it and turn it into the Newman projection. That's our goal. So if that's our goal, we have to approach this by where are we going to place our eyeball? Now that seems a little weird, right? But if I could take my eyeball, okay, and look right down carbon one and carbon two. I'm just looking right down it. So if I could, I'm trying to get my eyeball, like I'm looking right down the molecule, down like this, and what do I see? So as I look down this molecule, what I do is I put my eyeball here, okay, and I'm looking at it, and I see that the X is a dash. So that means it's going this way into the glass. So that's in my left hand. And then this O is a wedge, so it's sticking out of the glass this way. So that's going to be in my right hand. So it's kind of like handlebars. The X is in my left hand, and the O is in my right hand. And then I just take the molecule and twist it 90 degrees. And then what do I see? The X was in my left hand, and the O was in my right. And this, hy this hydrogen right here is straight up. So I see it straight up. So when we take a look at the Newman projection, we have what's called the front carbon and the back carbon. So this right here, if I put this little pink dot right there, that pink dot is the front carbon. And that front carbon is carbon one. So that is carbon one. And then we have the back carbon, and that's the back carbon. Now, why is that? Why is carbon two the back carbon? Because when we're looking down this uh, zigzag molecule, our eyes see this carbon very first, carbon one. And so that's going to be our front carbon, and that is represented by that dot right there. Now, the circle right there, that is the back carbon. And the back carbon is the second carbon, our IC, and that would be the second one, the back carbon. So when we draw this Fisher projection, we are looking at the front carbon first, and I'm doing the handlebar trick. I see the X is in the board, in the board, and the O is on outside of the board. And so I just grab them and place them. Okay. But as my eyes continue to look down carbon one, carbon two bond, I can see that the P is pointing down. And so I'm drawing it pointing down. Now the circle represents carbon two. So you notice that the P right here, I have a line drawn from the circle to the P. I don't have it drawn like this. If it's drawn like that, then it's implying that P is bonded to carbon one. But when I come over here, P is bonded to carbon two only. So you can't make that mistake. When you're looking at the back carbon, or carbon two in this case, these groups, Z, Y, and P, have to be bonded to carbon 2, and the circle represents carbon 2. And so as I'm looking down this bond here, carbon 1 to carbon 2 bond, I can see that the Z is in the board, so that's in my left hand. I see the Y is a wedge, so that's on my right. And then when I come, boom, Z was in my left, Y was in my right, and there they are. Let's see, what else is there to be said here? I'm looking at the time. We have some time still. So let's take a look at another example 
of how to uh, look at Newman's. So let's take a look at these two molecules. Now, when you look very, very carefully, these two molecules, they're not two molecules. They're the same molecule, just different conformations because I rotated around this bond right here to give us this. So these molecules are identical. They're just in different conformations. And the Newman projection is going to help us look at these. What you need to do is make sure you have your carbons numbered. And the problem sets that you will see will tell you which bond to look down. You could very well draw a Newman projection looking down. Take your eyeball. You could take your eyeball right here and look down carbon 1 and carbon 2 bond. You could very well take your eyeball and look down carbon 2 and carbon 3 bond. You have to pay very close attention to what the problem is asking you when it says, hey, here's a molecule, draw a Newman. You could even draw Newman's coming from the other angle. You could take your eyeball and look down the carbon-3, carbon-2 bond. So it does not, there's many ways to draw these Newman's for a single molecule. You just need to understand which bond you're looking down, and that's going to be explained to you in the instructions. So the instructions are going to be look down this molecule down the carbon-2, carbon-3 bond from that direction. All right. So how do we draw the Newman here? Well, the first thing that you do is you draw a circle and draw a dot. And we have to identify our front carbon. That's carbon 2. And so the front carbon is going to be the dot. And then we just look at it by taking our eyeball and looking down this plane. And when I do that, I can see that the bromine is a wedge, so that's outside of the board, and the hydrogen is on the inside, so that's in my left hand. So when I take that, where are they? We can see that the they look like this. Now, this carbon-1 right here, where is it? It is right here. So if I call, I can call that carbon one, put the one right there. Because it's pointing down when I'm looking at it from this angle here. So the bromine is in my right hand and the hydrogen is in my left hand. And then carbon one is just a methyl. So we can just leave it as a methyl. That's my front carbon. Now as I, so that's the front carbon. We got that down. Now, as I continue to look down this bond here, I see that this carbon-4 methyl is pointing up. So that's carbon-4. And then we're going to have the handlebars here. We have the chlorine as a wedge, so that's in my right hand. And the hydrogen is in the board, so that is my left hand. Boom. So that means the chlorine's right there, and the hydrogen is there. And if you want, you can put in the methyls like this, if that makes it look better for you. So that is that confirmation for this molecule right here. Or this is the, that's the confirmation, that's the Newman and vice versa. Okay. Now, what we've done now to go from this confirmation to this confirmation, we've simply just rotated around the carbon-2, carbon-3 bond. And now we have this different confirmation, and we want to also look down the carbon-2, carbon-3. Oh, that's not a good angle now, is it? There. So we want to take our eye and look down the carbon-2, carbon-3 bond and draw the Newman. So we just draw what we see. First step, draw a circle, draw a dot, and we got to identify our front carbon, which we are looking down the carbon-2, carbon-3 bond. So that's our carbon-2 is the front carbon, and I see that this carbon-1 is pointing down. So we'll draw that down. There's our methyl-1. And then bromine is in my right hand. Hydrogen is in my left. Boom. Bromine. Hydrogen. 
Now the back carbon. Now this one's a little tricky. Look at this, that back carbon. I'm gonna do the back carbons in a different color here, just to highlight this. When I'm looking down, do you see how this carbon right here in the front is down? And then in the back carbon, it is also down. So I have to draw it. Basically, if this was, if we could draw it perfectly, this bond right here, the carbon three, carbon four bond, would be directly behind this methyl, directly behind it. But we can't draw that and make any sense of it. So what we do is we just go to the right ever so slightly and draw our methyl there, so CH3. So that CH3 in pink is this CH3 in pink. So this CH3 in pink technically is directly behind the blue methyl group, but we can't draw it that way. So we just offset it a little bit. And then I continue looking down carbon two, carbon three bond, and I'm like, okay, what's in my right hand? It's a wedge, so that's out, that's out of the plane. And so that is a hydrogen. And then what's in my left hand? It's the chlorine because that's in the board. And those are also directly behind these two groups, but you can't show that. So what we do, where's my hydrogen? Right there. And then where's the chlorine here? Like that. So what this is gonna do for us is now we can compare these two Newman structures. And from principles that you're gonna learn in the future, you can look at these two Newman projections and say, hey, this conformation right here is lower in energy and more stable than this conformation. And you're gonna learn those principles shortly. But that's the power of drawing your Newman projections is it allows you to figure out which conformation is the most stable or the lowest in energy. Okay, so that's where we'll end with this video. If you have any questions, please let me know.